Good morning, everybody. We are cracking down on some Invigor canola. We finished that next era. So uh, we just started this Invigor as of yesterday, and it is October 1st today, I believe. So last night, um, we, we typically go to about midnight every night. It's about how late we go. And uh, last night, we barely made it to midnight because it was getting so tough on us. This swath, as you know, has been in a swath for over two weeks, and it's still going through hard. I'm doing around two and a half miles an hour. I'm not, I'm only using about two thirds of my power, but every time it, a big wad goes through, um, it goes rub -a -bub -a -bub, rub -a -bub -a -bub. So anyway, last night, we're out over here. We did like 10 acres last night, and because uh, we moved from a different field. And I was just trying not to break this gauntlet. I don't make that up. Like, it was very stringy, it was wiry. It was wrapping up around my auger on my pickup. That auger right there is a pop, 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 pop. It's just wrapping like a round bale and I have to go out there and pull it all off. And uh, it was just going through so hard. I had the clothes right up and I was uh, had my rotors at like 1100 trying to chew this stuff out. And uh, you could bail anywhere I went out there. It was, uh, it was a little excessive but anyway we wanted to get to midnight because we have to because you know we got to get x amount of acres done in a day and i'm only cracking out like a quarter a day here well it's pretty hard i guess to uh, do more if you can't break past three four mile an hour yesterday in the heat of the day i got up to four mile an hour in some places but typically i was running around that three three and a half the straw is clearly not fully dried down under there it's very chewy um Obviously, the longer it stays in a swath, the more it dries down, the deader it would be. Obviously, more rain helps. Rain helps rot the straw down, and you know, you you know, in theory, that's one of the great things about swath is you pretty much put it through like dust. But heavy swath, and uh, it's doing around 53 bushels an acre right now. And I believe my combine isn't fully accurate. I think it's doing a little bit better than that, uh, given how many uh, trucks I'm taking off of it. But anyways, we're really happy with the cannoli yield. Heck, I'd be happy with 40, 45. And anytime you're inside of 50, uh, then I am, that is just ecstatic. I'm super stoked about that. So super happy with the yield. I think, <coughs> excuse me. This particular field is probably, I bought this field, it's my very first field that I bought here uh, when I first came up here. And it's a pretty good land and uh, it's had the most tender loving care. Uh, this field is probably gonna be our better field and it, it's probably gonna flirt with 60. So uh, that won't be an average across all of our canola. So don't be like, oh man, Mike's canola is doing 60. That's not true. I hope that my, all my canola corner to corner averages between 40 and 45. That's what I hope for. But we'll see. The proof will be in the bin, literally. The uh, Invigor canola is definitely easier to clean. I am a lot happier with my sample. I was really disappointed with the sample of the Nexera. And again, that I do believe that just contributed to that it was overly dry and I was just busting it up too much, overloading the shoe. Um, the Invigor takes actual thrashing um, to thrash it out. So uh, I can do a cleaner job with it. Um, this is the stuff that the D450 was swathing when I was having all those swather problems. So the swath is condensed, it's quite narrow and, and stacked up. And I think that's contributing to some of my uh, speed. Halfway through the day, we will get into what I did with the Mac Deer, the W170, which is the Mac Don, wider opening. And I really do believe that we'll be able to streamline, we'll be able to get going a little bit quicker just due to the flow of the canola. So the problem with the D450 made here is I believe is it started double stacking canola because the hole is so small. It's kind of putting a bunch up on top. So you have a really thick, narrow, thick swath. Um, where when we get back over to where the W170 swath, uh, it's going to be a wider and I think it's just going to streamline. Because this stuff's kind of chunky. Like literally, I'm kind of pulling it off in chunks and you can hear it in the combine. Last night I was 
it got so violent, you guys, that this thing was rattling on my door. This little piece of plastic is like, blah, 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 blah. and I actually uh, told Ron, I think, I think I'm gonna pop my door open. That's how violent it was getting. And I'm like, okay, hey, we gotta shut down, or we're gonna shear those couplers off those rotors. These these rotors do have couplers on them, so that way they can shear. And I do not want to shear one of those off. So, uh, oh, and you're wondering probably, well, Mike probably because of all of those big piles that you left when you were squatting. Yeah, those aren't fun. If I had a dollar for every time I plugged my feeder house trying to just like gently grab and nibble at those, because you don't want to take it all, because and, and then that's what happens anyway. It just all comes and whoop, plugs your feeder house. Uh, so we just lift right up and over those now. We don't mess around. We're not taking the time to try and nibble at those. Uh, we just lift, whoop, go over them, come back down the other side, and then when we come back out here, we're just going to burn them. Uh, for the little bit of canola that's there, it's not worth our time. You're like, well, Mike, surely there's some canola in those piles, and there is. But by the time you sit there for a couple minutes, maybe not a couple minutes, but a minute or two, trying to nibble at that thing with your pickup belt, you're just shelling it out anyway. You're not getting that much canola at all. You're just wasting your time and risking your slip clutches and everything else and rotor couplers, so it's not worth our time. Uh, we have a lot of good canola that we got to pick up, and we're just going to go streamline on that, and uh, we'll pick right up and over those piles, and we're not going to mess around with them. We will have to burn them or something, though, because we're not going to get through them with a the drill. Come on, Mike, you can harrow. I don't have a harrow. So, harrowing isn't an option as of right now. All right, let's just listen to the combine purr for a little bit. yesterday with their pans and we were dropping we had this thing tuned in so when we're in the green here we're a little bit above the green by about a bar but when we're in the green we're about 0.2 to 0.3 of a bushel loss uh, and they say once it hits the, the top then double it again so if we were 0.3 here a top up there would be uh, 0.6 okay so a little over half a bushel so right now we're probably that 0.4 right now currently of a bushel loss and again, I've said this a hundred times, and I'll say it again. Um, every farmer is different in what they want for losses. Some farmers want to utilize the full power and capacity of their combine. You can do that. You will increase your losses. Maybe they'll be satisfactory to you. Maybe you're in a crop where you can utilize the full power of your combine, and you're still only at a half a bushel loss. That's awesome. This stuff is pretty tough straw yet. We're having trouble chewing it through and we can't get a good even flow right now. Uh, so we cannot utilize the full power of our combine, but we are pushing to what Mike's maximum potential of losses are. I like to be at about 0.25 and under. Now you're like, well, why don't you just be at zero? Well, that's impossible, okay? Yeah, at combine at the best of times is gonna be spitting out at least 0.2. That's just part of life. I know a lot of farmers who are fine if it's under a 0.5. I know farmers that are happy if it's under a bushel, anything under a bushel, they don't care. As long as it's under a bushel, they just want to go. Um, I also know guys, that as, as long as it's under 1.5 bushels, as long as it's under 1.5 bushels, it's fine to them. And everybody's different. And maybe you need to maximize the acres at your combine. 
if you're like, man, I got 4,000 acres to get out of this combine up north, you're going to be like, anything under 1.2 bushels is fine. You're just going to go because you're going to have to calculate, well, a, another combine payment is X. So it's better for me to push this combine and throw some money out the back. X is still cheaper than taking on more debt. Okay. Or, uh, Whatever. So those are, that's just an example. So every farmer is different, and every and every uh, everybody, um, everyone's farm is not the same as like your neighbor. So you never find two farmers the same. Here's some standing stuff that didn't get cut. You see it's still green. I'm a little worried about that because I let some canola come in all natural. Probably a big mistake. <laughs> so I probably plugged my auger here in my pickup header I don't know a dozen times already half of those would be on piles that I was trying to get because I thought you know that's the thing you gotta do and now I don't I don't even bother anymore the other half of the time that I plugged it was just pushing hard into this swath and it just plugged it especially last night when it was getting really tough chewing and then I plugged my feeder house which is different um, I think four times. I have yet to plug our rotors. We better not plug our rotors. I would much have it stop down there any day of the week than have it stop in the middle of this combine. There's a prime example of a pile that I just picked up and went right over it. I was like, you know what? There was one little pile, one little one. I'm just gonna clean him up, ease into that little guy. Nope. So uh, when you do plug it, I plug the auger, okay, my header. And uh, how do you know? Because the slip cut goes and the auger doesn't move; it just shakes. That's how you know. Okay. All right. Good sound effects, Mike. Now, you just uh, obviously you want to shut your header off as soon as you can. And believe me, when you plug your header. You cannot shut it off fast enough because that rattling just, it just hurts your soul, okay? So now you just put this thing in reverse. There you go. Follow the directions. You can reverse or feed. So we want to reverse, press the button. It's moving our, it's moving our auger in reverse. It is not moving our belts, just the auger. Oh, and your uh, feeder house. It's also reversing the feeder house, okay? You stop and you want to feed and it would just creep it not going very fast there it goes the power bar is going up it's fluctuating and yes you leave your uh, engine on and everything separator at full rpm there we go then your belts will kick going that's like it's just like it knows Right, flip this back to the off position. Wait for your directions. There you go. I like to idle back down. This is why you do not have time to mess around. How many how many minutes have we burned off here? Then engage. There you go. Then idle back up. Your belts will start turning once you start moving. There we go. And then continue on. So that was exactly two minutes, probably a little longer because I was trying to chew at it for uh, probably another 30 seconds. So no one has a couple minutes per pile to mess around, prime example. Well, it is now 4 p.m. and uh, our swaths are nicely drying out. It's been, I think it's like 25 degrees outside. It's pretty nice, it's quite windy. And um, 
We're able to cruise a little more. Beats two and a half and three. Again, we haven't got to the uh, Mac Deer Swaz yet. We gotta finish this little chunk over here, and then once we get to this side, then we'll be able to. Now we get to start using up a little bit more power. Stuff's going through way better. You'd be surprised a little sun and wind to do. Mine is uh, saying, Mike, why do you do this to me? And we are now on our very first swath. You and I are just learning together of the Mac Deer. I can, it's already wider. It's way fluffier because it hasn't been rolled. Um, what's the difference for picking it up? Well, we're going to find that out. So far, it's picking up fluffier. If anything, maybe it wants to shell out a little bit more right there. But that being said, oh boy, what do we, what do we got here? Someone dropped some of the last swath on here and slow down here. Okay, back on the races. You can definitely tell it's picking up lighter almost less chunky and then quick back to the d450 narrower swath see how it looks a little more uneven less fluff it makes it a little chunkier which i believe does affect my crop flow i'm literally going from one to the next here so i get to really do some trials I don't really gain any more speed. It's just, you can feel the combine go less like vroom, 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 which anytime you have a vroom, that is uneven uh, threshing. So that's not awesome. You don't really want to hear that. You want to have consistent feed. No, no, no rumping. You don't want rumping. <laughs> you hear that one?
Mac deer. Definitely, definitely picks up way easier, no doubt. In fact, I can even gain some speed on it. And I shouldn't throw the roller, the swath roller on the D450 under the bus. Probably has nothing to do with the roller. Um, has to do with the D450 holes a little too small, so it has nowhere to go but stack the canola on the edges, on the sides, right? Just stuffs it all in there. And then back on the D450. Keep in mind they had to make tracks to drive across here on the headland, but it's definitely rougher. D450. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, we thought we could pick up the same speed, but we can't. You can see how it's a little... Yeah. It's what I call a fairly bad plug. Might actually have to get out and start digging here. Huck some of that stuff off. Did I hit a, a pile that the D450 left? No, I did not. I was just pushing into that swath. If you push something hard enough, you're gonna find the weakest link. And believe me, I would rather it be the pickup header. I mean, you gotta do this a couple times. If it's really bad, you gotta get out and Knock some of that stuff off and kind of help it. You can hear it. See it. There you go. Power bar is going up. That means it's going through. That's awesome. you guys on the flip side um, next video that we do will be pretty much just that Mac deer there won't be any uh, d450 for comparison um, so yeah I'll catch you guys on the flipper adios amigos